Hey everybody, I think I'm live. Uh, let me know how I look in sound right now. Um, I think my music is a little loud. Let's fix that. There we go. There we go. We're getting there. Just like my fourth stream. We're getting there. Welcome back. I'm Dave from Chase the Summit. Um, and I just wanted to have like a informal live stream to honestly and truly just straight up thank you guys for hitting 10,000 subscribers. Uh, I honestly didn't think this channel would have gone there. Uh, it started as like a little social experiment for myself because I'm not really a uh, like outgoing, you know, <laughs> extrovert individual. Um, but I did have a real passion for the gadgets and the fitness stuff and the tech. Uh, so it comes naturally, I guess. Uh, before this, I actually had a written blog, you know, the old school type it out, have people read it. I didn't really get that much traffic. Uh, I had a few subscribers and some people kept visiting, uh, but honestly, it was just more of a fun thing for me to do rather than a serious endeavor. Um, so after moving to YouTube, it was kind of a system shock when so many people started commenting and viewing and subscribing and emailing me and Instagram messaging and Facebook. It was like, holy moly, I, I really didn't expect that. So uh, cheers to you guys. I brought I brought a beer. So we're going to drink a beer and I encourage you to join me uh, if you're able. You know what? Let's do a quick, quick overhead of the beer because I got the camera now. At, at popular request, we got an overhead cam now. So yeah, this is a uh, Dogfish Head IPA, 60-minute uh, IPA. Not much of a beer drinker myself, but today's a so celebration, right? So I've got a lot of topics to hit on today. I just want to open with that. Uh, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. It means the world to me. <laughs> I know it's still like a small channel, but it's like very exciting and it kind of validates the imposter syndrome I kind of had getting into this and getting in front of the camera. So without further ado, um, first off, I want to talk about a little giveaway I'm doing. So I've got some new stickers. Check these out. These are awesome. Uh, Chase the Summit stickers and they're holographic. So they they say, Chase the Summit, run, hike, climb, explore. And then they've got this little, uh, you know, they got my URL on there, but it's really tiny. So it's more of a decoration. They are cool. Uh, and I really dig these on my car. So I'm going to be giving a bunch of these away. I don't know how many. Um, maybe I'll give everyone one. <laughs> but if you go down into the comments, or not the comments, description on this video down below, there's a link that goes to my website. All you got to do is fill out your, your name, put your address in the message, and put the uh, subject swag. Um, and then, you know, I'll pick and choose. I'll choose a random uh, and send some out. I might just send everybody one because who knows how many people will come to the stream anyways. I also have a uh, Chase to Summit trucker hat. I really dig these too. Um, I'll probably give like two or three of these away. Same thing. Uh, all you got to do is click the link down below and uh, fill out the information. Give me your address and write the word swag in the subject and I'll send them out to you. So I just want to open with that. I also want to give a shout out to uh, Matt Legrand. He actually gave me the idea for the stickers. These are his. They're really cool. Um, and so, yeah, check out his channel, Matt Legrand. Uh, he does a lot of uh, similar kind of reviews, but also in like a, a triathlete's capacity or like from their perspective. So check out his channel. Among other channels. You know what? Let's do a... Let's do a shout out for channels. If you like my channel, go check out obviously DC Rainmaker and Desfit. Those are the big guys, right? But also go check out um, Ryan Clayton, good friend of mine. He's got an awesome channel about ultra marathon running. Um, you know, there's a lot of great resources out there to learn from. And uh, yeah, it's a really cool community we've got going on here. It's like growing to be a community. So um, I've got a few topics I want to hit on today. I wrote them down, got them on my phone so I don't just babble on forever. Uh, yeah. So first off, I want to ask you guys, what do you want to see this channel turn into? What kind of stuff do you want to see reviewed? I mean, do you just love the GPS watches? Cause that's kind of what my views tell me, <laughs> but you know, I like doing other stuff too. I don't want to just like pigeonhole myself. So do you like just, uh, the watch reviews? Do you like fitness tech as a whole? Do you like just tech as a whole? Do you want to see my take on a laptop? I don't know. Um, give me some ideas, shout them out in the chat and, uh, I'll definitely read them. You know, I'm going to bring, if you guys have questions, you can, you can feel free to, to shout them out and I'll bring you up on screen and we'll tackle them together. Uh, I also got like every watch under the sun here with me. I charged them up before this video because <laughs> some of, some of them died. 
So I've got all these watches. I got the Koros. I got the Polar stuff. I'm wearing the Garmin stuff. So you know, uh, if you're interested in, if you've got questions about these, we can do a Q and A a little later on, uh, or you know, whenever you want to ask, and I'll get to them. Uh, yeah. What else we got? Yeah. So we're we're just checking off the list here. Hey Ryan. Hey Matt. Thanks for joining, guys. Appreciate it. What else we got in here? Rob. Thanks. Music media outlets. Uh, Sith Lord Hodor. That's quite a name. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. So, uh, yeah. So let's talk about my races this year. Right now, I've got zero, zero, big zero. And it's actually like, it's been kind of a bumming, a bummed out time for me. I've like been working super hard in my, you know, day job. Um, I've also been working really hard on this channel, trying to create content you guys want to watch. Uh, and I've got three kids um, doing the dad stuff all day. They're they're not in school right now. So working from home, doing the dad stuff, doing the YouTube stuff, it's been kind of crazy. And then like on top of that, not having any ultra marathons to focus on has been kind of depressing in a way. That's probably why I've been making so many videos. It's a good distraction from that. Um, so I've been trying to come up with a cool idea for like a solo mission, like run 100 miles on a popular trail here in New England. Um, maybe in the mountains. I don't know. I've been trying to piece something kind of unique together for myself, not like an FKT attempt because I'm not that fast. <laughs> I mean, maybe on one that doesn't get a lot of traffic, maybe, um, but something in that capacity, you know, something really unique and cool. And, you know, if you're from the area, definitely try to enlighten me here. I'd love to hear from you. Um, but I don't, I don't really know where I'm going to go or what I'm going to do, but I want it to be like at least a hundred miles and maybe sometime in September. Um, maybe self-supported. I don't know. I was thinking maybe the Vermont long trail, that'd be pretty cool, but I've been kind of, uh, all over the place on that. I don't have a, a lot. Um, and I, I need something really to focus on or else I'm just gonna start, you know, wandering or, you know, I'm not going to run as much as I should. If I, if I don't have a goal, that's, I'm a big goal oriented person. You know what I mean? Uh, Michael Sessler, let's bring you up on the screen. Let's see if uh, Ryan would be into that sort of thing. Wow, I clicked your name. Oh, there we go. It's blank. Oh, there you go. You and Ryan should do a 100-mile collaborative. Ryan, what do you think about that, man? <laughs> I can meet you in the middle, right? We're, you're in Indiana. I'm in, I'm in Massachusetts. What's between us right in the middle? We'll do something there. <laughs> Thanks for your comment. Um, music media, it says a bad move. I don't know what that means. Did I ramble on and say something? Uh, oh yeah. A bad move regarding my, my training. Yeah. So if I don't have a goal, I'm just not going to have, I'm not going to stay motivated. That's the thing with me. I got to have like, like the YouTube thing is like, I wanted to get to a thousand subscribers and got that. And then I was like, I want to get to 10,000. That'd be awesome. So I got that. So if I don't have a goal, like something to focus on, then I just start, you know, deviating or I start investing too much time in like my actual day job, which, you know, maybe I should be investing more time into, but it's not really as fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's do it, Ryan. So Ryan, Ryan's a much faster runner than me, but uh, yeah, I'd be down. Maybe we can go in opposite directions and swap car keys in the middle. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, you know, as a background to me, I don't know if you guys care, um, but I, I just want to give you like a little brief history on where I came from. I got into ultra running uh, through, basically I, I was in like, I was overweight, I was smoking cigarettes, I was drinking a lot. I was definitely not the healthy guy I should have been at, at like age 22. And then for some reason, I, you know, I met my wife and she kind of, I didn't, she, I, she didn't turn me around, but she kind of opened my eyes a little bit because she was a lot fitter than me. And, and I just felt like a slob at the time. <laughs> so I went ahead and I bought a pair of running shoes. I'll never forget the day I bought a pair of running shoes. They showed up in the mail and I opened the box and, you know, it was like an Amazon box or whatever. And my wife uh, goes, what are those? What are you going to, are you going to start running? And she, she said it in this like humorous way. And then like fast forward a few years and, you know, of course, like my obsessive behavior just took hold of it and I went crazy with it. Um, so here I am today. So that's like where I came from. Um, and then, you know, the gear kind of came into it. My background is in mechanical engineering. So I love how these things go together, like the watches and all the tech. 
Um, I just love the, you know, a lot of people don't like to focus on that. And I, I totally, uh, I totally respect that. Like why people like chorus watches, for instance, is because they're so primitive and basic and you don't want to get wrapped up in like downloading music and the maps and all that stuff. Right. But at the same time, like I just have this technical mind where I, I love the software, the hardware, how things go together, like innovation, like the solar panel on the Garmin stuff. How cool is that? Right. So I love to see these companies push and push and try to bring things to the next level. And that's kind of where my blog came from and now where the YouTube channel came from. Um, yeah. So, you know, that's kind of kind of the history of, of who I am and where this channel came from. Um, let's see. Rob. Oh, man, I'm trying to keep up with you guys. Thanks for chatting. It makes me feel less alone. You know what's weird is when you start a live stream and look over at the chat and literally no one's there. You just got to like talk to yourself. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with my personality. Uh, Rob, more of those would be great, but your tech videos are the bread and butter. They really help with buying expensive tech with confidence. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. You know, there's a misconception. Sometimes in the comments or through emails, I get kind of this vibe that people think people just give me stuff. Like Garmin just hands me a watch. Trust me, that is not the case. There, there are some freebies involved, and if they are free to me, I will state that in the video that this product was given me to for the purpose of review. But I have to this day never made a sponsored video. A company has never paid me money to make a video, so I like I like to to state that out in the open because a lot of people are, are get confused about that. I think it, even if a company like Garmin said, you know, here's a thousand dollars to do a positive review, I would turn that down. And I do turn those down from, you know, kind of no name companies that email me from overseas. So I get that a lot. Um, let's bring up a comment. He's, he's talking in caps. So he's, he means business. Uh, let's see what we got. Sorry. These comments take a second. I want to know your opinion on something very loud, man. You're so loud. I had the Chorus Apex and I traded in for the Garmin Phoenix 6 5 or Phoenix 5 plus titanium. Was that a stupid move? Uh that depends. I don't know. Do you find did you find the Apex limiting? I mean, what did it do that you wanted it to to do? And then take that and does the Phoenix 5 plus do that for you? I think in my opinion, the 5 plus is a more versatile watch that well, it's not more versatile, but it does have more, definitely has more features, right? You get the first beat analytics, uh, you've got the mapping on board. Uh, the, the downside to the 5 Plus that I personally didn't like, I actually got that watch, used it for like a week and returned it. It was the battery life. It did not hang. I mean, specifically the the 5 not X, and I think that's what you're talking about here. Um, as an ultra marathon runner, you hate to carry a charger and I had to do it even on a 50 mile race with that watch. So granted, I'm not the fastest 50 miler, but it was in the mountains. And so I have an excuse. Um, and so after that, I was like, no, I can't. Now the course apex, you got crazy battery life. You get that, you get that, um, 35, 36 hours of battery life, which is crazy, right? Uh, that's really the standout feature for Coros as a whole, as, a, as their whole brand. And they pride themselves on that. They're, they're all about staying focused on being um, simple and uh, super efficient, great battery life, easy to use. You, you click the button, it goes, and then it sinks, right? That's that's awesome. Um, that's what they should all do. And we just learned from Garmin a week ago that they don't all do that, unfortunately. That's another thing. You probably missed out on the whole uh, Garmin outage that just happened uh, a week ago. Oops, switch cameras by accident. Uh, thanks for your question. Oops. Bringing up, another, bringing up another thing here. Uh, you follow up with that to say, I really like the Topo maps and it was a must have. Well, then there's your answer, man. Uh, for me, I agree. I, I love the mapping. A lot of people don't use it. Like if you're just a road runner or triathlete or you dabble in uh, trail running or something, you, you may not use the Topo maps at all. Personally, for me, they're a lifesaver. Like if, if I'm in the mountains and I, I don't, I mean, I know the, the mountains locally pretty, pretty well, but there are situations where I've gotten lost a little bit. I mean, not desperately lost, but I can just hit back to start and it will route the course rather than track back so you get the quickest way back to your car. Sometimes you need that, right? Some, I mean, a, a use case for me is if I'm on a long run in a real crazy network of trails, uh, my wife texts me like with an emergency or maybe I have to get home quicker. I always use that, that route back to start. It's super valuable to me. Uh, so I appreciate that. 
Uh, but you know, a lot of people love the chorus stuff and I don't blame them either. Really, it's hard to complain about any of these watches. We're, we're truly nitpicking. My channel is, uh, all about nitpicking, right? So it is what it is. Um, Koros is simple. Garmin's the opposite. And Polar is like somewhere in the middle, I think, if you're interested in Polar stuff. Uh, yeah, so I want to do a couple updates on some of the videos I just made. Uh, first off, the Garmin Phoenix 6 Pro Solar Titanium. I'll bring her up on the overhead because huh? I got it. Move my phone so it looks good. Matt Legrand just sent me a photo. Hey, <laughs> thanks, Matt. Now you're on camera. Uh, yeah, so the solar video I made a week ago. <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks, Matt. Uh, so I made a, a video a week ago about the solar functionality of the uh, the Pro Solar Titanium, the new one they just released. This is the 47 millimeter watch. So in that video, I tested out the watch in the sun, and then I covered up the then I covered up the screen to block the solar panel to see what it would do in the shade. Now, unbeknownst to me, apparently when you charge the watch to 100%, it doesn't use the solar panel. So my whole test in that video is flawed. I actually thought about taking that video down, but I left it up and I, I pinned my comment. If you go back on that video, you'll see that I pinned a comment correcting uh, myself because the solar panel wasn't active because I charged it too high before the test. So right now I'm working on a new video to test out the solar feature at like 50% capacity in the sun and in, in the shade. I also have uh, Garmin agreed to send me a loaner of the uh, the new Instinct Solar, which I'm really excited about. Unfortunately, my my talks with them were, were going on during the outage. So I don't know what emails went through or because their whole email system went down. I couldn't even call the contact that I have. Um, so they, they were telling me they're going to send it. I should have had it last week. It never showed up. So I'm assuming there was a lapse in communication. Uh, but once that pro or the Instinct Solar comes in, I'm going to do a comparison video between the Garmin Instinct Solar and the Phoenix 6 Solar uh, only based on like how much benefit they get off that solar panel. And I think the Instinct's going to win hands down, but it's a different kind of watch. It's, it's not really trying to compete with the Phoenix 6. Uh, still, though, it should be an interesting video. I'm genuinely interested in seeing how it turns out um, because there's a mode on the, the the Garmin Instinct Solar that apparently has unlimited battery life. Like, you just never have to charge it. Granted, you got to, like, turn off every feature for it to work, but it's kind of kind of a clever idea to say, like, if you get two hours of sunlight a day, you never have to charge your watch ever again. It's pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and check some messages here oh cool yeah let's bring this up so music media outlet says i'm actually going to visit uh massachusetts with his girlfriend after medical school uh entrance exam uh good luck on that and what trails do you recommend so a few come to mind it depends where you're going to be but if you're if you're staying in the boston area the uh the middlesex fells are about 20 minutes north of Boston and you might see me there because I run there all the time. Um, it, it's where you can get like the most elevation gain uh, locally, which is kind of hard to find because Massachusetts is kind of a flat state except for a few areas. But in the Fells, there's a there's a trail called the Skyline Trail and it's about eight miles long and you get like 15 or 1600 feet of elevation gain on it. And I use that as like my training tool. I've done like there's actually an ultra on that that trail that's uh, four or five laps, depending how far you want to go. So it's a 32 or uh, 50K uh, race, and I do that every year. Um, but I also run it for fun like once a week. It's awesome. It's the, the closest you get to feeling like you're in the mountains uh, close to the city. But there's also an area called the Blue Hills Reservation just south of Boston. It's uh, I think it's near like Quincy or something. Um, but yeah, so just south. Boston, uh, the Blue Hills Res Reservation, oddly enough, has a trail also called the Skyline Trail. <laughs> and that's really cool as well. Um, I've done that, I think, once. It's a really fun trail. Uh, both are very close to the city. But if you go outside of the city, the best part about New England is a two-hour, two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour car drive gets you to the White Mountains of New Hampshire. And those are like we call, you know, that's why they, they say the beast coast. <laughs> Maybe we just say that, but the beast coast is because of how rugged 
the White Mountains are. They're not very tall. The, the tallest is uh, Mount Washington at 6,200 feet or so. Um, but they're super rugged, like just crazy rocks and wet and, you know, real steep. There's no switchbacks. Everything just goes straight uphill and straight downhill. So it's it's where you can really you can really learn what New England's all about for trail running. So I could suggest uh, those two areas. And then if you got some time, head up to the mountains because they're awesome. Great views. Um, and, you know, just avoid weekends because they can get busy. <laughs> Let's take another question. Uh, does the Apex have a back to start feature or were you talking about the Phoenix? Yeah, I was talking about the Phoenix. Uh, the Apex does have a back to start. I would show you, but it's probably not exciting content. Um, it's not the same though. So Garmin, their back to start function has options. You have track back, which will literally, t literally take your, your track, turn it around and just, you follow it back to the start. And then they have route back to start, which actually uses the map data in the watch to calculate a route back to the beginning point and it uses the uh the shortest and easiest distance it also uses something called uh um, trend line popularity wow that lost me for a second uh where they take the trends of like every trail runner or every cyclist or every runner and they use uh the trend like the hot the, the heat map like a strava heat map to to route you back to the start using the most popular route so you don't end up on like some overgrown trail or something. So yeah, the, the navigation features on the Phoenix 6 with the back to start feature are just leagues. I mean, they're not even in the same realm of any other company. No one's doing it. No one on the planet <laughs> except for Garmin. Um, or like Apple Watch or a smartwatch if you want to download a third party app like uh, Gaia GPS or something like that. My hope, my hope is like some big name in the mapping industry like um, Gaia, for instance, or even Kamut. Kamut um, partnered up with Polar with the uh, Grid X, right? And, and it's a clever implementation, but there were flaws. And you'll, you'll see that in my review video if you want to go watch that. Um, it's just turn by turn directions. You don't know where the heck you're going. You just have like a, it says like 10 meters to the next turn and it's turning left, but it doesn't say, you know, after that, how much further you have or any of the information. So uh, I like that they partnered up with another company. The big problem is, well, the big advantage to Garmin is because they are a mapping company first, right? So they own all of these topographic maps. They, they invented them. They've got that history behind them. And all they had to do is roll it into their watches. They've been doing this for years, right? Um, now Polar has, is primarily a fitness company. Whoa, microphone. Polar is primarily primarily a fitness company. Um, and then Koros really, they, Koros targets a really niche market. I find they, they go after like Alpine adventurists, like expeditions, but like how many people are climbing Mount Everest? A lot. Yeah. But not as many people who are going for runs <laughs> on the regular. So they, they've really, uh, put themselves in a, in a market where, they just want to be as simple and minimal as possible and provide tools like an like an altimeter and a compass. They also make them their their products very rugged, which I appreciate. But they're they're not, you know, they're they're great at their battery life, but they're not exceptional in navigation. But the thing is, Coro still has better navigation than Polar. Um, and that's because they have an actual map. Yeah, there's no trails or road names or, you know, streets or anything but there's a map of where you went and how far you are. And uh, you can follow yourself. Even if you didn't get a back to start feature, you could still follow it manually by looking at your watch and running 10 feet and then looking again, but it's nothing like Garmin. Sorry, that went on for a while. I should have, uh, <laughs> should have cut that off a little quicker. <laughs> uh, but you know, I get, I get ramped up. That's why I made this channel. I like to talk about fitness gear and watches and stuff. Oh, I've got another update. I made a video couple weeks ago when I was on vacation, right? Who saw that? Anybody? About this shoe. This one. This is the uh, Ultra Torin Plush uh, 4.5. And I know Ryan, you've got these too, right? Ryan Clayton, if you're still out there. Uh, I got these a couple weeks ago. I forgot my shoes. <laughs> I forgot my shoes when I went on vacation. I, I literally, I spent so much energy trying to make sure I wouldn't forget my shoes. I put them on top of my suitcase by the front door. I moved them around. I, I made sure they would be in my line of sight going out the door. So I packed all my kids in the car. I packed all their luggage in the car. I got my luggage in the car. 
drove three hours, and then I found out I forgot my shoes. They were still on the floor. So I went to a place called Marathon Sports, shout out to them, in uh, Yarmouth, Mass., and I bought these uh, Ultra Torn plushes. And just a quick update, they've got like, I don't know, 100 miles on them now. Um, they're awesome. They're still holding up great. They're not worn out. There's no uh, blowouts in them like some previous shoes. So they're uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about is the, uh, I've been reviewing the Stride Pod. I don't know if you guys know what this is, but this is essentially uh, a power meter for your shoe. And this can actually pair with your Garmin Fenix 6 or any Garmin device. It can also pair with Polar. Now, one weird quirk about the the Stride Pod is it won't pair with Koros, but that's not because of Stride, it's because of Koros. They haven't implemented that into their software, which is pretty unfortunate because I really like pairing it with my watch rather than uh, using the phone app. But uh, it's a really awesome tool. Um, I'm just starting to scratch the surface about the the using the power metric and training. Um, I've got a Training Peaks account. I've been using, uh, you know, the actual uh, Stride app that comes with this. Uh, I think this is about two hundred fifteen dollars. I want to say maybe two fifty. I should have had this written down, but I don't. But so cool. It, it just basically what running power is is your actual output of power at your feet, rather than your heart rate. Where if you stop and your heart rate takes a while to settle, uh, and then you start running again and your heart rate takes a while to ramp back up, power is like instantaneous. So you know exactly how much power you're putting out, and then you get a metric called uh, critical. Was it critical power? Ryan, correct me on that. Uh, critical power uh, that tells you like what amount of power you could sustain for an hour or more, which is pretty awesome to know because if you know your critical power output, you can uh, stay under that so you don't hit that bonk, right? So yeah, there's a lot to this and it's a really cool little device. It's so amazing that it's this little, just clips onto your shoelace. And, and it tells you all that data. It even has a, it actually has a wind sensor on it. So if it's a particularly windy day and you're running into a headwind and you're getting blown back, this will actually capture that and show that in your power output. Pretty dang awesome. I was gonna say a different word, but we're, we're live and we're kid, kid friendly here. But you know, I'm drinking a beer. So Matt Legrand, Stride Pod is $220. Thank you very much. I'd say it's well worth it. Um, I think it's a really cool device. Okay, let's check some uh, some more comments, huh? Damn, Garmin, that's impressive. I agree, Harry. I wish more companies would do it. And my hope, I think I said it already, is like, if Koros partnered with Gaia GPS, imagine that. Imagine how awesome that would be if like in the Gaia app, there was like a send to watch button and just went right into your watch and then you had the full map. It wouldn't even have to be a rootable map. Like it could be literally like a JPEG that just is blown up and it moves around the watch and then they show your point on it. That would be amazing. That's like the the next step before they get to the rootable maps. Rootable maps, I understand, it's very hard to do, but they're doing it. Uh, Music Media Outlets says, what are your thoughts on the Whoop 3.0 bracelet? So interestingly enough, a couple weeks ago, I reached out to them to see if I could get a media loaner to check that out. Um, I didn't want to buy one because I'm not I'm, I'm not that excited about it, to be honest, but I am curious about what it does offer and how it compares to some, some of my other sensors here. Uh, if I do get one, you can be certain that I will post a video about it. Don't have one yet, but it does look pretty cool. Uh, okay, Joe Bo. I, th- I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, I'm new to running and was wondering what the integer seconds for pace and what is the best setting in your opinion? I love your videos, by the way, thanks. Uh, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, so let me reread that because I'm having a hard time comprehending. What is the integer seconds for pace? I, th- I think you're talking about, uh, what? You're <laughs> the integer seconds? Uh, not sure. I'm going to I'm going to move on and I'm going to think about that and come back to it if it if it strikes me as something I can answer. And if not, someone correct me in the uh the live chat. Uh let's take this one here. Matt Legrand, as long as you didn't forget a kid, you're good. Three kids ain't no joke. Yeah, man. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> well, maybe you do. What do you have? Two? You've got two, right? Yeah, it's it's uh, tricky getting them out the door for a week long vacation. It feels like we're moving. It's like we packed our entire house. We got cribs. We got you know 
toys. We got the uh, the beach stuff. We went to the beach every day because I you know check out the sunburn, right? Pretty sunburn. I'm a, I'm Irish. I'm not this tan. Okay. Um, I've been thinking about buying for a long time a Garmin for a long time. I'm a pretty solid. I'm pretty sold on the Phoenix Six. Just the price tag that makes me hesitate. Does Garmin normally have good Black Friday sales? Yeah. Uh, they will have a Black Friday sale. Thing is, they probably won't have it, or maybe by the time this, yeah, for the Phoenix 6, they might have one on that because they'll probably be ramping up for their next flagship. Um, but they do have another thing that a lot of people don't know about. Now, pay attention closely, everybody. This is a huge deal, and I feel like no one knows about it. But if you have, if you live in the U.S. and you have Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, health coverage, you can get up to 30% off Garmin.com on certain devices. But uh, last time I checked, you could get the Phoenix 6 at 20% off, which is huge, right? I mean, that's awesome. And the whole idea behind it is Blue Cross Blue, Blue Shield is interested in keeping you healthier. So they give you that discount. So go check that out. If you, And I've heard other uh, health plans also do this with different companies. So you might, I know a lot of them do it with Fitbit, but you know, I don't want to fit it. Some people do, <laughs> uh, but you know, there's, there's options out there. So check that out. And Garmin occasionally, very rarely, they're pretty stingy on it. Uh, we'll do it. We'll do a sale. I think your, your better alternative might be to pay attention to Best Buy. They carry Garmin's and Best Buy will have like 20% off coupons very randomly depending on your account. So check in on them. Um, I know there's a website out there for price tracking too. I forget the name of it. But yeah, you can put in the, uh, the the thing you're looking for, anything, and it'll actually like send you an email when when the price drops on it. So that's worth looking into. Uh, hope that helps, and it's worth it. Like if you want to know the Garmin Phoenix Six, if you if you can utilize the tools it gives you, it's worth it. it it's expensive, but it's investment. I just had this conversation with a friend who was about to buy a Coros, um, and I love Coros. Don't get me wrong, I know. If any of the chorus people are watching, I love them. Okay, but they're they're for a very particular purpose in a per particular person. Okay, um, if you want like any smart features, and I feel like if you're watching my channel, you might be into the nitty gritty or the features. You know, so Garmin's got them. Um, of course, it's still awesome. Okay, Matt Legrand, details on the beer. Uh, let's let's get the overhead. Again, huh? I, I don't want to tilt it too far. Actually, I got two, so I'll I'll bring the unopened one in so you can see it. This is the uh, dog dogfish head, uh, sixty minute IPA. I'm a big IPA guy. This is a pretty common one, I think. I don't think this is local, is it? Mm. I better not drink two of these, or I won't be able to. Uh, no, this this is from Delaware, but yeah, I better not drink two because I won't be able to finish the stream. You guys will like watch me uh, sleep on my desk for twelve hours till tomorrow <laughs> uh okay oops i clicked one. Oh, this is a good one so in defense three kids <laughs> uh music media outlets what mileage a day do you recommend uh oops am i still on the right camera oh yeah what mileage a day do you recommend to gain more stamina to go longer distances? I'm trying to run 30 foot plus miles on a given day. Yeah, so uh, that's a loaded question. I'm not a coach, okay? No, I, I, I can try to give you advice, but just realize I'm not a health professional. I'm not a coach. So anything I say could be incorrect. Personally, I'm a big I'm big on listening to my body, but I also use uh, heart rate or, or or power zone training now that I've got that ability to when I'm trying to increase my mileage. You don't want to go like if you're a 5k a week runner, you don't want to do 20 miles the next week. You want to go up in like 10% increments every week. So if you run 10 miles a week, you know, add a mile to it. And that's that's a good way to go about it until you hit that that goal number. Because the biggest thing and the worst thing that can happen, I'm kind of fighting right now, is an injury. So last week, I actually didn't run any miles. I Well, today I ran five, but I took a week off because my knee has been barking a bit. And it's uh, bumming me out quite a bit because I've got, I had big plans. I had two hundreds that were supposed to be happening this year. One was two weeks ago and the other one was actually going to be next weekend. The Eastern States 100, both are canceled. 
Um, fortunately, I guess, because I've got a little bit of a niggle in my knee. But uh, yeah, I just want to, I want to, you know, emphasize, be careful with it. Uh, make sure your, your body isn't in severe pain. <laughs> Don't like, a lot of people say push through the pain. I'm a I'm big advocate on saying like, listen to your body, give it a rest day if you really need it. Um, and then you'll, you know, live to run another day. That's the best part about it. So that's the best advice I can give you. Uh, if you're a 10 mile a day runner, you know, bump up to 12 miles and then up to 15. And after a few weeks, uh, I'm ta- talking weekly, weekly mileage here. Um, and after a few weeks, you get up to 50 miles. And my big idea on mileage is like, if you were, if your goal is to run a 100 mile race, you don't necessarily have to run 100 or uh, 100 miles before that race in one day. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> what you got to do is um, do 100 miles in a week, right? And that that's kind of uh, repetitive, you know, runs one after another every day, not giving your time your your body enough time to fully recover, but also not risking injury in, in a one day shot. And that goes for 30 or 50. So if you want to, if your goal is a 30 mile race. Try to run run thirty miles in a week or or forty miles in a week. Um, you know that's the best advice I can give you. Uh, Ryan Clayton, you know, a friend of mine, he's he's got a lot more uh, detail. He's he's actually a coach and he he knows more than I do about this stuff. But I just like to listen to my body. Uh, okay, let me uh, remind everybody because we got more viewers now. Wow, we almost got thirty people watching. Jeez. Uh, so we've got. TNTL, the giveaway. So just to remind everybody at the beginning of this uh, video, I announced the giveaway. We're going to be doing uh, some of these stickers. These are Chase the Summit stickers. We're also going to be doing some of these hats, Chase the Summit hats. And if you go down into the video description, you'll see the details uh, about how to sign up for this. All you got to do is write me a message with the subject swag on my website. And I will pick some folks at random to win. I don't know how many people are going to win. You might all win, depending how many people sign up. You, you might at least get a sticker, but uh, yeah, I'm not totally sure. So go sign up. If we get a uh, hundred people signed up, I might, might pick, you know, 10 or 20. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, and he says, can I please win the give- giveaway? I'm a massive fan. <laughs> I suggest signing up. Uh, da, da. Okay, let's this is a good one. Thanks for all the question, guys. This is awesome. Which race were you most looking forward to this year that got canceled? Oh, so I was kind of torn on this, even when I signed up for them. This was kind of a lofty goal. Uh, I had the Vermont 100 July 20th, and then three weeks later in August, the Eastern States 100. So that's not a whole lot of time for me to recover. But I thought if I could do back to back hundreds within, you know, a few weeks of each other, that might set me up uh, to to do a 200 in the future. You know, I've had my eye on like the Bigfoot or uh, some of the some of the 200 plus mile races out west, you know, as like kind of a runcation to go do something like that. I know a lot of people think that sounds miserable and I kind of do too, but I'm I'm just curious about how far I could push myself um, and, you know, I, I, I'm not really sure where that line is. I, a hundred, I, I thought was impossible until I did it. So yeah, uh, hopefully next year, uh, I, both of my races got deferred this year. So I'm, I'm on the, the entrance list on the Vermont 100 and Eastern States for next year. Uh, but I might eyeball a few others. I'm not sure yet. Thanks for your question. Oh, Sith Lord Hodor. Uh, since you brought injuries up, how do you deal with the pain? Uh, especially knee pain. Yeah. So this goes back to my previous comment about just listening to my body. Um, I've gotten pretty good at knowing when I'm going too hard. Little known fact, I actually had uh, surgery on my knee. Um, <laughs> I was a, a, a back in my twenties, my early twenties, I was an apprentice electrician. I'm not that old by the way. I'm only mid thirties now, but I was an apprentice electrician and I stepped off a ladder funny and I uh, twisted my knee and actually full out dislocated it and it popped and something tore. Um, I think the back side of my patella, the back of my kneecap actually broke off, the cartilage sheared off. So they did, uh, they went in uh, with laparoscopic surgery and they like cleaned that up. I guess they kind of like cut away the stuff and polished it. So every now and then if I push too hard 
And I was, I was doing like 56 miles, 50, 60 miles a week for a couple of months leading up to this. I knew I was pushing a little too hard, but I was really just trying to, you know, run out the, all the stress in the world right now, you know, the pandemic and working from home and, you know, kids being home all the time. I was, I was honestly just like using running as meditation. So I was running a lot more, um, and not giving my, myself enough rest. So it blew. I don't think it fully blew. Uh, I can still run. I did five miles today, but it was super slow. Um, so I'm probably going to baby it a little bit. I actually use a, hang on, I can get it. Yeah. Little known fact, uh, this, this pile over here is like my storage for gear. Um, I use this thing. This is a, uh, uh, percussion therapy gun. It's super loud, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, you can really loosen up your, your calves and quads. And, um, it's really helpful for situations like this with my knee. I usually get a really tight quad and that kind of pulls my kneecap the wrong way. So I use, um, this thing, and grunt through the pain to loosen it up a little bit. So it's worth looking into if you uh, have a situation like that. Hope it helps. Thanks for your question. <clears throat> oh, Harry Robinson. Is there a way to pay without PayPal for your merch? There is. Uh, so it looks like it's PayPal, but you can actually just use a credit card. If you click on it, it'll ask for your, uh, your credit info. And I will happily mail them out uh probably tomorrow if you order tonight i actually mail all my merch myself there's like a pile of hats and stickers and stuff over here so um yeah let me know uh music media outlets are you on strava i am uh and you know it's funny after the last video i did about um oops yeah so after the last video I did about uh, Garmin Connect being down, I got that video went crazy. I got like 40,000 views in the first day. I was like, whoa, what's going on here? Um, and then like a thousand people started following me on Strava. And I was like, oh man, I forgot to like uh, blur out my username on my Strava page from that video. So yeah, uh, you can Google a little bit, try to find me. Yeah, it's a public profile. I actually set up one of those uh, privacy radiuses around my house because I didn't I didn't really know. I didn't really know that many people were gonna follow me. I only had like you know twenty five followers, and then I posted that video, and a bunch of people followed me. So, yeah, I'm on there. You can find me, <laughs> Jason. Are you spray painting your shoes? Are you talking about the? Uh, are you the guy that commented about those shoes? Yeah. For people who don't know, black is not my favorite color, and uh, these torn four point five plushes just. They don't strike me. Um, I like really bright, you know, like all of my, my singlets and running stuff are all like super bright. So yeah, I was hoping for a different color. I've kind of grown to them though. You know what I do is I make up for it with a really bright sock that really makes them pop. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I can get some, uh, some shoelaces. <laughs> Auto. No swag for Mexico, but greetings anyways. Keep the good work. I've been using my Phoenix 6X for four weeks now, and I'm very pleased with it. Coming from the Phoenix 3 HR, it's a great improvement. I agree. That's a big step up. And I think a lot of people um, have, you know, they have a misconception. Oh, that's funny. Somebody just followed me on Strava. <laughs> um, a lot of people have a misconception about how big of a step up it is from the three series of Phoenix watches up to the six it's like a huge leap. And I know a lot of people that have three still that are like, Oh man, this watch stinks. It's got terrible battery life. It's slow and blah, blah, blah. But they don't realize that the, the new sixes are just like super fast, great battery life. Got the, the music on board. You can pay for your gas with it. Like it, it's so cool. It's got so many features. That's really hard to make videos about them. <laughs> Matt Legrand, I need to try that gun. <laughs> Affiliate link that. Yeah, I'll, th I'll throw one down in the description. Uh, I forget how, I think it was like, it was one of those like knockoff brands. There's like the real, there's the Theragun and there's the, I forget the other brand. There's like the real percussion therapy guns. And then the one I bought, I think was 89 bucks and it came with like two batteries and it works. I mean, I, I can't complain about it. I don't know how much more effective I would want it to be because it's actually kind of painful if you, <laughs> if you aim it in the wrong spot. 
All right. So I think I had some other topics to talk about. Oh yeah. We're going to do some mail time. Do you guys care about that? So ever since I became, uh, you know, hit 10,000 subscribers, I've gotten a lot more, a lot more companies reach out to me now and, uh, just send me stuff. And sometimes it's stuff that doesn't even pertain to my channel. Like really weird, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, some, some stuff is really cool. Some stuff is a little bit out there. Uh, I want to get your feel for it. So, uh, call, you know, live chat, let me know what you think of these products. First off, the thing I got to show you first, some people saw it in my last video and asked what it, <laughs> what it was in the comments. This is the Devoom Dito 2. Okay. You might be wondering what the hell is that? And I kind of agree with you. So when I opened the box to this thing, I was like, well, what am I looking at? They didn't tell me what it was. This literally just showed up in the mail. And uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty wild. So this is a little uh, Bluetooth speaker actually. And it's got this, uh, it's got like an analog keyboard on it. Like your first uh, computer ever. Like listen to that. How awesome is that? And uh, yeah, so check this out. I know this is totally off the cuff and you guys probably don't care about this, but uh, so I'm not going to make a video about it. So I figure I might as well mention it here. But if you, uh, yeah, you turn it on and it's got this little LED screen on it <laughs> and it does all kind of like it's pairing with my phone. It does all sorts of like wacky animations like hot. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and this, this actually goes to the music, which is pretty cool. My kids have gotten a real kick out of this and you can actually, uh, yeah, you can play Tetris on it too, which is a uh, interesting. So yeah, that's the Dito Devoom 2. It actually has a micro SD card slot on the side, which is kind of interesting. So if you want to like just preload your music, you can, uh, you can play it. Uh, it's actually really loud and the sound quality is surprisingly good. So yeah, there's your, uh, what is that? 30 second mini review of the Dito, uh, Devoom Dito 2 believe it retails for $79. Link in the description. <laughs> I don't know if I'll link it. I will link it because you might think it's cool. You know what? It's going to live back here for the remainder of this video. We'll put on a good, we'll put on a graphic. How about that? Hey, someone just bought a sticker. Thanks for your order. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah. So I want to do some more mail time, some stuff that more pertains to uh, the fitness world. Uh, we're going to take a look at, first of all, I posted a couple of reviews about headphones. Like I did a, a Jaybird Vista review, which is, uh, they're like my everyday headphone. I love them. But since then, like every company on Amazon has reached out and sent me earbuds, which is good and bad. Like I'm overwhelmed with the amount of earbuds that have shown up, shown up from, from companies. Um, I, I appreciate them sending them out. You know, some of them are really cool and some aren't as exciting, but I want to show you one pair that is surprisingly cool for the money. So, Let's uh, let go zoom in there. Hey, thanks, Harry. Appreciate it. Thanks for buying the sticker. So yeah, these are the uh, Tribit. It's a weird brand name, but uh, this is the the Tribit uh, Fly Bu Fly Buds Three. And you know, at first I wasn't expecting much out of these, but they're actually really unique. Okay, so you open the case, you've got your little earbuds there, and. They're like really small and surprisingly very, very comfortable. Like these feel like um, Samsung Galaxy Buds if you're into those sorts of things. So yeah, super comfortable, really cool. Um, and they've got a really long battery life. This case has up to 100 hours of battery life in it, which is pretty awesome. But something that's really unique about them is that if you pop this front thing off now i'm i'm pretty niche on this this i'm probably like the one use case that thinks of this but it's actually got a charger here so you can actually plug like your phone into it and charge your phone because this case has like 2500 milliamp hours in it um now my my immediate thought on this was this is awesome i can throw this in my running pack and if i'm out on like a hundred mile race mm -hmm. instead of carrying my watch charger uh, like a way, like a power bank to watch, to charge my watch. I can have my headphones and a watch charger in one. So yeah, pretty cool. And the other thing about these is they're actually $39, which, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty surprising. They are true wireless, uh, $39 headphones and they're actually, um, they actually sound really good. Like they're up to, they're up to snuff. And this is coming from a guy that has, I think I have 27 pairs of uh, earbuds right now. 
Some I bought uh, and some were sent to me. Uh, yeah. So I don't know how much more mail time I want to do. Let me know if you want to. <laughs> let me know if you want to see more mail time. So what do we got here? Do you like Lacroix sparkling water? Of course I do. Um, drink a beer right now, but I, I drink uh, what's the lime one? I really like the lime Lacroix. It's very, very good. So, uh, here's a good one. Could Garmin possibly make a solar watch with sapphire glass? They actually did already. I can show it to you. If uh, Let's check. Let's see if I can do this. No, that's not it, Dave. That's not it at all. <laughs> uh, overhead camera off. Yep. There we go. Title or live off. No, we'll leave that on. Okay, so the uh, Garmin uh, Tactics. Garmin Tactics Delta. Yeah, so check this out. Uh, it's the newest one. Yeah, let's turn that off. This guy. Uh, yeah, so here, check this out. This is new. I wanted to talk about this. I actually asked Garmin for one of these, but I think it's above the amount of money they want to send me, <laughs> like as a loaner. So this is uh, a brand new watch that came out. It's basically a Garmin Phoenix 6X, but with a bit of a different design, like more for tactical operations for like, you know, army guys or Navy SEALs or whatever. Um, but a very important thing here is there's actually a button for solar. And if you click yes, uh, it says Dactic, Tactics Delta Solar Edition. Uh, and then when you scroll down to the specs here, if you look closely, yeah, so it says Lens Material Power Sapphire. So I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, and they also have a DLC uh, coating on it, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that is essentially a Garmin Phoenix 6X with a sapphire glass and a solar panel and a DLC coating. Unfortunately, it's $1,100. So I guess that's up to you to decide whether or not how important that is. The other thing is it, it only comes in that um, full size uh, you know, 51 millimeter case, which is in my opinion, kind of big for my little dainty wrists. So I don't wear, uh, I don't wear watches that big, but it is a pretty interesting option. I would love to get my hands on one to see what it's really like. Uh, and maybe if I beg Garmin enough, they'll, they'll send me one, but nothing yet. Thanks for your question. <laughs> okay. We are what? 53 minutes in. I think I'm going to go for an hour unless you guys like want to uh, light up the chat and we'll uh, talk more. So I get some, I, yeah, I wrote down talking points so I don't just like stare at the uh, wall this whole time. Okay. So I guess I want to talk about what I'm excited for in the future uh, this year, specifically with like new releases. And I think we're going to see something from Garmin sometime later this year i don't know if i don't think it'll be um a phoenix unfortunately i think we're gonna have to wait till 2021 for a phoenix uh, i think it's gonna be a new forerunner and i saw a bunch of rumors online for the forerunner uh, 955 with lte built in and i i feel like this is gonna be the next big thing and it's probably again gonna be unique to garmin because of their clout you know they're just so big uh but Imagine having a 945 kind of watch, a Garmin Forerunner 945 with the maps and all this stuff, but also being able to put a SIM card in it and taking phone calls while you're out on a run. How awesome would that be? Then you could have, you could actually leave your phone completely out of the picture at home while you go on runs, even really long ones. The question I have is what kind of battery hit is that going to take? I feel like an LTE antenna just it takes a lot of juice and I don't know if the teeny little 250 uh, milliwatt hour batteries in these watches could really take, uh, you know, making phone calls, but maybe, maybe they'll find a way to like keep it off until you need it or like just ping satellites every now and then. I also have this dream, right? Where right now we have, um, 
Garmin Live Track where you can you can broadcast your location during a run, which is really cool to like a loved one. They can see you live on a map and see your pace and everything. But you got to have your phone with you to broadcast that signal. Now imagine if they had live track actually in the watch. So you could just run without needing your phone on you and it would update on a map in real time so your friends and family could tell where you are. I could see that being huge for particularly ultra marathons where you might have a crew like waiting for you somewhere. Uh, right now I carry a, um, a, a Garmin, uh, in reach mini when I go up into the mountains or like when I really get out there, uh, I always have the satellite communicator with me, uh, because you know, I've got a family and a wife that worries about me. I've had, I've actually had the, the in reach or the, the spot gen three fail on me in a really bad situation. That was awful. I might tell a story if you're interested, but, um, They've been somewhat reliable and having satellite connection means you don't have to worry about cell phone antenna range. So if you're really out in the back country, nice to have that. But yeah, so the future I think is going to be all of the watches will start having LTE built in probably from Garmin. I, I don't see like Chorus doing that to be frank because it's such a novelty feature that they're, they're so minimal. So I just don't see that happening. That was a really loud truck. Did you guys hear that? Um, so yeah, that's something I'm really excited about is the LTE, um, future for Garmin and what that means for the Phoenix line, as well as the, the forerunner, because the, the big questions are like battery life, a, but also like, how do you, how do you, uh, put a SIM card in and keep it like hundred meter waterproof, right? Like there's gotta be a door on there at that point, or maybe a screw. I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like imagine taking your, your brand new Phoenix six out and then having to take a screwdriver to it to uh, put your SIM card in. <laughs> that would be pretty weird. So, uh, let's go to the questions again. This is awesome. Thanks guys. If you had to choose Hoka or, uh, Nike, uh, you know, it's interesting as uh, the Nike wild horse, I think they're called, that's kind of piqued my interest. Uh, they seem like something I could, I could probably run in. I just have a weird shaped foot, you know, like my foot fits into ultras like a glove because I have a lot of toe, toe splay. I've got that Morton's toe where my, my middle toe is longer than my big toe. Yeah. Probably too much information for you guys, but, uh, yeah, my, my feet fit in ultras. I, I tried, uh, Sportivas before that. I also tried, I think I briefly tried, um, Brooks Cascadia's and, the only shoe that just fit me like a glove was the ultra lone peak. And now that I've, I was like a trail runner first or a hiker trail runner. And then I started road running. So to complement that, I bought the Torrens. I also got the Escalantes, but I've come back to the Torrens. Um, and I'm really happy with the Torrens right now. But, uh, if I had to choose, I, you know, the, particularly the, the Nike wild horse, but Hoka is, they're doing cool stuff too. They're just, uh, you know, I, I don't know why I'd go there from ultra. Yeah. I don't know. We're, we all have different feet. And if you are a runner that has always run with a stack, like, um, you're not a zero drop runner. I think, uh, it makes that decision a lot harder. Like you have to make a conscious decision to go zero drop and then adapt to it. Um, but I, I think it's pretty beneficial and I know Hoke is like what four millimeter drop. So it's not, you're not up on a high heel, but yeah, hope oh, that that probably didn't answer your question, but you know, I tried. <laughs> Uh, another question from Music Media. It's uh, would you ever do we, uh, Western states? Heck yeah, I would. Um, if anyone's listening that can get me through the lottery, uh, yeah, I'd love to. I, I I subconsciously try to choose races that are qualifiers, but a lot of them aren't, you know, in this area. Um, but yeah, so the, I think Grindstone was one. Uh, the Grindstone 100 was on my radar this year. That just got canceled actually last week or a couple weeks ago. I was, you know, still, I was eyeballing it still because my two races got canceled and then Grindstone's in the same time frame and they weren't canceling. So I was like, maybe they're just going to find a way to do it. And then in my mind, I'm like, maybe I'll just sign up and maybe I'll just go. And they had a 100% uh, refund policy. So it's pretty low risk, but they ended up canceling in the end, unfortunately. So, but to answer your question, heck yeah, I would love to do Western States if I had the opportunity. It's like, you know, it's a bucket list, right? That's, that's something. <clears throat> Take another one. Hey, it's still going, still going back there. Also, this is a, 
Check this out. This just showed up. This isn't the question below, but overhead cam it, Dave. There we go. Uh, this is a, this just showed up. It's called smartwatch, your personal health tracker. I haven't opened it yet. And, uh, apparently this is the cheapest GPS watch on Amazon. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if you guys want me to unbox it live, let me know. I'm gonna stick it back here for now. Uh, should I stick with the Phoenix six or Coros vertex, uh, bought based on your recommendation? Thanks. That depends again. It, it's, uh, totally up to your use case. Uh, Garmin, Garmin's latest attack made me reconsider using them. One more thing, the polar vantage V no more future updates. Yeah. So I actually funny thing. I, I talked with the polar rep a lot about their brand and stuff. And what I appreciate about Polar is they are very receptive to my feedback, which is rare. Like I've only got 10,000 subscribers. I'm not any sort of voice of authority in the you know industry. And the rep really wanted to know what I thought about their hardware and software. How could be better? How, how could they position themselves better in the market? And I, I had a phone call with him. We talked for like an hour. So I thought that was really cool and it made me respect them and hopefully we see more exciting stuff from them soon. Um, but yeah, so one big thing I, that I've seen a lot in my comments and my videos is that they don't support older hardware and that's true. Like the Vantage M and the V, they kind of got left behind in like the Polar Grit X that just came out. Even the Polar Unite has a couple of features that those older watches don't have. And it's unfortunate. Like, I know you've got to you've got to draw a line somewhere. You can't just put all of the latest greatest tech into all of your stuff, um, or else. Well, Coros actually does that, but I know you've got to have a line in the sand saying like why this product is different than another, and it can't just be hardware. Well, it can be in some cases like Coros, but you have an easier time selling the higher end uh, products if you if you have a, a paywall, you know, like if you want maps, you got to buy a Phoenix six or a 945. They're not going to put that into the, the 400 or 245 because then no one buy Phoenixes or 945s. And I understand that it's, I mean, I also get that it takes memory you to put a bigger chip in there, more CPU power to render the colors and stuff. But it, at the base of it, I think they're doing it as a clear decision to, to differentiate it. Um, I went off on a tangent there. But yeah, so that's that was one thing about Polar that I didn't like. I don't like that they stopped supporting older hardware. And I made that known to the rep I talked to, and he was very receptive about it. Sorry, my phone keeps buzzing in the background. I don't know if that's being picked up by the mic. Um, put that in the pocket, Dave. So to answer your question, Chorus Vertex versus uh, Phoenix 6X. If it was me, I would Phoenix 6X all day long. Now, if you're somebody who you want uh, to go on an expedition for a month and not bring your watch charger, I'd say get the Vertex. And I think for a lot of people too, the Vertex is going to be a better choice because you're simple. You don't like getting overwhelmed with menu systems and diving into all the widgets and customizing and uh, you know, it's sometimes a little bit much. Like even my wife, um, she has a Garmin uh, Vivo Active 3. I should probably get her the four, but she's got the three right now. Uh, and she basically like takes her watch off and hands it to me and says, just, just set it up, get it going because she doesn't want to deal with it. And I totally get that. And like Koros is that you buy it, you put it on your wrist, you scan your camera to it. It syncs up. Like everything's just very easy about it. And Garmin's a little bit overwhelming if you let it be. So I think for me, I would go, uh, Phoenix six X easy, but you might value a uh, more minimalistic approach or that crazy long battery life. And, and of course the, the lighter weight that comes with it, it's way lighter and it's also really well built. So Coros did a lot right with the Vertex. And I think if they just started and they are issuing more and more firmware updates to get it up to, you know, bring up the features a little bit, it's a, it's a compelling option, but it is still really expensive. Um, so yeah, hope that answers your question. Uh, Rob Matok, May Matok, Matok. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. 
TS, tell the story. Oh, yeah. Should I tell a story? I'll tell a story. So, hang on. Okay, so you see this thing here? It's the uh, Garmin InReach Mini. I'm actually thinking about doing a review on it. So this, I don't know how many of you know what this is, but this is a satellite communicator um, that you can pair with your phone. You can actually pair it with the Garmin Phoenix 6 too, which is really cool. Uh, and this allows you to send messages to and from uh, loved ones you can or friends and family. You can do it for fun. You can actually check the weather and you can do all of this without a cell phone signal. And that's because this talks directly with a satellite network that is flying around the sky. So um, it's a really great uh, idea, <laughs> but like it doesn't work like a cell phone. A lot of people assume that like you're just going to go text, hey, how's it going? First of all, it's very expensive. You need to like pay per message or you pay for a plan that includes so many messages. It's almost like a cell phone from like 1995 <laughs> where it, it feels a lot like that. And it's weird because it's branded Garmin, but the whole system behind this is actually from a company called Delorum that's actually up in Maine. Um, and Garmin acquired them and just stuck their brand name on it. They made the hardware, but all the software is still Delorum. Still, I'm going off on a tangent here. Now, I took this little device. We'll go back into the screen. I took this little device ice climbing in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. I went out on a mission with my friend Brent. Uh, we were going ice climbing up um, Pinnacle Gully in Huntington Ravine, which I don't know if any of you know what this area is. Um, it's a water ice three ice climb. Uh, it's about 900 feet tall, and uh, it's really remote. It's at the base of Mount Washington, which is the highest point in um, in New England. And it also is the home of the worst weather in the world. It's It's got the highest wind speed recording of like 255 miles per hour or something like that. So going in there in the winter, it was uh, February, I think. So the, the, the forecast for the day was like 30 or 40 below zero. Um, just brutal, you know, and then not only that, we decided to do it at night. We we're going to night climb Pinnacle Gully. So we got in there and everything went to plan. Like we were just trucking along. But of course, my wife heard this plan and she's like, you're crazy. Like, what, what do you think you're doing? And we, you know, we had kids at the time. Uh, and so I still did it. And I just told her I'll have the inreach. So if there's a problem uh, or I'm late, you can message me and I'll, I'll get right back to you. So anyways, we went in there, we did, you know, three or four pitches of ice. We got up to the summit of Mount Washington uh, and then we started hiking out. And at that time, I looked at my watch and I'm like, oh crap, we are running so far behind schedule because being in the dark when you're um, tying into anchors and you're putting in ice screws, like everything just takes a lot longer. And so I, I realized how bit behind we were on time. So I decided to send her a message. I said, hey, we're running late, please, uh, you know, don't worry. Uh, everything's totally fine. We're, we're safe. I'm just running a little behind and we're hiking out now. So she never got the message. Uh, and I knew she never got it because the screen kept indicating that the mes message wasn't sent. So I was literally walking and they always tell you like you need a clear sky or cloud cover has to be minimal. It was like no clouds in the sky. It was a little windy out, but that doesn't affect it. Um, and the message would not send and I couldn't figure out why I was on top of a mountain with no clouds above me, holding it above my head, trying to get that message to send wouldn't send. Uh, so yeah, of course, uh, a couple hours later, I'm freaking out. We're like trail running in our mountain climbing, our ice climbing boots with like 50 pound packs on, uh, trying to get the heck out of there so we can get cell signal to contact my wife because I knew she was going to panic. Of course she did panic. She called 911. <laughs> Uh, 911 dispatch called uh, search and rescue in the White Mountains and uh, issue, they started to put together a, a search and rescue team to come find me and Brent who are totally fine. Uh, long story short, the search and rescue guys got into the lodge where all the climbers sign in uh, to the to the lodge. When you're going up into the ravine, you, you sign in your name and what time it is just as a record of who's in there. And they saw my name and this guy, my friend Brent's name. And fortunately the search and rescue guys knew who we were and they're like, all right, let's just give them a little bit of time. And, uh, so it bought us a little bit of time and we ended up coming out in time to say we're okay. They called off the whole thing. It was a very close call. Like 
if they issued a search party for us and they hiked up the trail and found us, like I would have been so embarrassed. Fortunately, uh, it didn't happen, but I do blame the Enrich Mini. So that's my Enrich Mini story. Uh, I contacted Garmin about that and they told me it was in too cold of an environment to work. So my argument there was, I know that this doesn't work in the cold. So I stuck it in my jacket, in my puffy, uh, to keep it warm. It was basically in my armpit. So it was, it was actually hot to the touch. It was warm. Um, still though, didn't work. That's my story about the Garmin Imreach Mini. And I hope, uh, hope whoever asked for the story is still here because I really went off on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, somebody asked a question a while ago. Oh, man. Can't keep up, man. Somebody asked... Uh, no, that's okay. Okay, so... They will be in eSIMs and we won't need a physical card. That's a great point. I didn't think about that. Yeah, probably eSIM, eSIMs in the future LTE watches like the uh, Garmin Phoenix uh, 7 and the 945. Uh, music Media Outlets says, you should invite people like Claire Gallagher and Courtney DeWalter on a show like this. Uh, that would be awesome. You know, I've thought a lot about that. Is that something you guys would want to watch? Um, I don't know if I could get them on the show, but I thought about like a interview format where we talk about maybe our, our first ultra marathon or like the first time we, we didn't finish a race or something like that. Does that sound interesting? Let me know because I've been in the background putting a live show format together uh, and trying to come up with something cool. And I've got a lot of interesting, exciting people that I think would lend themselves to something like that. So yeah, let me know. Um, it's good to read that because uh, it's something I've had on my mind for a while. So yeah, thanks for that. I will uh, continue to work on that. Uh, Jeet Shah says, your weekly mileage sweet spot training for ultras. That totally depends on the race. Uh, for, for a 100 miler, my weekly mileage is like 50 to 60 miles. So I know there's a lot of people out there that are crushing 100, 150 mile weeks. That is not me. To be fair though, I'm not front of the pack. I, I finished front of the pack like a couple of times and that was uh, exciting for me. But for the most part, I'm like, if this is the race, I'm like here, not in the middle. I'm a little closer to the front, but sometimes in the back and you know, I kind of waver, but it's, it, I would run more if I had more time on a given week. I'm like 50, 60 miles max. Uh, I have cracked 70 in a week. And of course, 100 uh, that one time when I ran a race. But yeah, 50, 60 miles. But if you're training for, uh, like I said before, if you're doing like a 50K, I would target the race distance. You know, do 30 miles and then maybe 40. But, you know, 30 miles for 50K, you can totally run a 50K on a 20 or 30 mile week. A lot of people um, don't get that. So yeah, don't don't worry too much about it. And, and a mile isn't a mile, okay? There's like terrain, right? So in an ultra, you're on uh, crazy hills or crazy terrain. Like uh, the Vermont 100 is a really unique race because it's actually uh, mainly Jeep roads. So it's trails, but they're graded. So it's pretty flat, but it's super hilly. So it's got 18,000 feet of elevation gain over the race, but it's not like super technical. And this really messes with your quads and like on the downhills, you can blow out your quads um, because you're not like on, you're not on like stairs, your, your feet are always angled up or down really is, a, it's a weird dynamic to get used to. So I would say uh, target your race target, um, target that as a weekly distance. And then uh, as far as terrain goes, try to run on the type of terrain that you're racing on. That's kind of a no brainer, but I thought it should be said. <laughs> Uh, music media outlet says pizza or tacos. If you had to eat it every day, uh, hands down tacos. Can I say burritos? Cause I would eat burritos every day, but tacos at least have some variety. I love pizza, but I'd probably go tacos on that. A lot of people saying, uh, interviews would be cool. That's good to see. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll ping some friends and we'll, we'll do something like this. Maybe we'll call it like beer time or something. And, uh, We'll have a interview. We'll do a, kind of a lowdown on that personality and, you know, 
we'll just chat. I think that'll be fun. Oh, uh, here's a good one. <clears throat> Mojo, are you worried about the personal data after the Garmin attack? You know, a little bit. <laughs> I, after I posted that video about Garmin being down, um, there were a couple of comments that had me a little concerned. One in particular, well, a couple in particular, were people saying that they had unauthorized charges on their credit cards that they had linked to, to Garmin Pay. I really hope that isn't true because if that comes out, that would be hugely bad uh, for Garmin. Like they'd have to rethink the whole structure of Garmin Pay. Other than that, like I don't really have anything to hide, like my physiological data or my address. Like, yeah, I don't want to be in leaked, but I don't think they have any data that could really be dangerous to me. Um, like my social security number is not in there. My credit card number is in there for, for Garmin Pay. So I hope that stuff was all encrypted. To my understanding though, the hackers that got hold of this data couldn't read it because Garmin encrypts all of the data. They only, they took all of that encrypted data and they locked it up. So Garmin couldn't use it. So that was their problem. The hackers couldn't actually read any of the data. They only had the ability to lock it up. And that's how I understand this all went down. Um, as a follow-up to that, it looks like most of Garmin services are back online. I think there's one or two things uh, like Vivo Fit Junior or something that aren't back online, but like all the basic stuff, step tracking, sleep tracking, um, all of that stuff are back online. So that's good news. And for the people that are like, I'm not buying a Garmin. I'm never buying a Garmin now that this came out. I, I, you know, I've been using Garmin for a very long time and this is the first time they've ever had a data breach like this. So I think they just got too big, right? Like, Go, like Polar and Koros are, are equally at risk, Sunto as well. Um, and they have valuable data. They might not have your credit card inform information, but they're all at risk of a hack uh, or being attacked. The reason why Garmin got attacked was because they're the highest profile. And when you think fitness tracker, running watch, you think Garmin. And that's why they were attacked because they have the largest user base. It's just like Apple, right? I think a lot of hackers are probably interested in Apple, <laughs> but I'm sure Apple's really good at protecting itself. Um, and apparently Garmin wasn't as good, but I'm sure they're getting better now that, that it happened once. Uh, one thing I wish they did handle better was addressing it like publicly, like they issued a lot of little statements that, that didn't really jive with what the news and media were saying. I mean, this stuff was high profile, the, the verge that, that, uh, tech company was, was watching it, uh, or, writing about it. So it was kind of a big deal and they kind of swept it under the rug a little bit. I know they kind of addressed it, but not all the details. Uh, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Yep. So Ellie Balsam, have you heard reports of the Phoenix six watches being incredibly inaccurate after the latest update? It's been happening on mine every run. Yeah, so I've seen a lot of reports of uh, particularly people from in the comments again on my Garmin Down video saying they couldn't even record a GPS run. And actually, my wife's friend has a Vivo Fit uh, 4 and she texted my wife saying, hey, I can't I can't start a run. What's going on? I thought that was really weird. I, I thought maybe people weren't just getting a GPS lock and they weren't waiting long enough, but maybe there's something to it. Personally, nothing has changed on my watch at all. Like I, I run very similar runs in my, my neighborhood, same distance every time. Um, I mean, within margin of error, uh, heart rate data is the same, not great, but still workable. So nothing has changed for me. Uh, are you talking about the 10.10 update? That's with the new sleep tracking and everything. That's the latest update I have. But uh, yeah, it hasn't hasn't affected me. So I know <laughs> the thing the thing I've found is like people just like to complain about <laughs> like if it's working uh, good, like they'll find something about sleep tracking. And if it's you know there's other issues, it's, you know there's always something that's not performing. But for me, the GPS is the I mean at first the Garmin GPS isn't perfect anyways, but uh, 
it's good enough for me. So, okay. How do you uh, balance training, work, and life? Uh, it, training and work life. Let me work, word that better. Uh, it's a huge challenge. I My day job is in mechanical engineering, so it's very involved, and I need to like be on the clock for that. And that's even harder being home now because I could just run out the door when I see the window and it's like a really sunny day. I'm like, how do I, why am I sitting here? But you know, you got to pay the bills. So, um, I try to just use, I, I'm, I try to be as efficient as possible. So in my schedule in a, in a typical day, there's like no wasted time. If I'm awake, I'm doing something. If I'm, so I'm either working, I'm working on a YouTube video, I'm taking care of my family. I'm uh, making dinner. So if there's a pocket, like a half an hour, I used to say, that's not enough time. I can't I can't get a good run in a half an hour. Now I say, use the time that's available. So if, if all I have is a half an hour, try to make it count. Get changed fast, get you know, get in gear, get outside and, and get a 5K or, or a little bit more. Um, and I, I just try to do take that mantra seriously and and use the time I have. And my wife has the same struggle. She is a very fit person. So she actually has the morning routine. She gets up at four o'clock in the morning, does her run in the dark with a headlamp on. Um, and then she goes to like bar and, and works out. So she's pretty hardcore as well. So it, it's very motivating for me to see that. And then she understands when I need my run, you know, it's time for her to we tag in and we, we high five and she starts taking care of the kids and then I go for my run. So yeah, it's, it's really, it's hard. It's really hard, but you got to want it. And I, I do want it. I like training. I, um, I really enjoy it and it keeps me sane. If I didn't get my miles in or like at least some sort of physical activity, I would lose it. <laughs> so that's, uh, the best way I can answer it. It's, it's a struggle. And especially now, uh, with the kids being home, we've been homeschooling and now we're going to have to start doing that again because our school district is going to like a hy- hybrid learning thing. Um, so I'll be doing my job, teaching my kid and also trying to run and it's crazy, but we're all living it. So I can't, I'm not alone in this. I mean, I have above, I have more than average kids, but uh, yeah, uh, it's a struggle for everybody. So we're all, we're all in it together. We're all going to be slower at our races in, in uh, 2021 because we didn't get to train as hard. Uh, and that's what I like to tell myself. But then again, I see all these crazy FKTs going on. Uh, you're a very logical guy. Hey, thanks, Eric. Appreciate that. <clears throat> Let's see. Robert, Robert Colbert. Uh, I was a day or two away from buying the Phoenix when I saw your solar video. I love the comparison and ended up picking up the Sapphire. Uh, I love having a peace of mind in my tech. Thank you. Yeah, Sapphire is a kind of a no-brainer if you're rough on your watch. I I really appreciated that watch in that I just didn't care. Like, treat it, you know, at night I'd take it off and, like, throw it next to the bed or, you know, whatever. And I clanged it off of like granite rocks when I'm trail running I've taken some dives and you know it's seen the full brunt and it really held up amazingly well and I've had sapphire watches back to the was the phoenix one sapphire I actually own the phoenix one the original phoenix (laughs) that thing actually had 60 hour battery life can you believe that and then we're fast forward uh with 10 years and we're back to 60 hours with the 6x um but I don't think that came with Sapphire. The first Sapphire I had, I think, was the 3HR. That came with Sapphire. And that was like, you know, it was domed Sapphire too, which is pretty cool. But I've never scratched one. And I've really abused my watches. I'm still rocking the solar. And uh, it still doesn't have a scratch on it. Which is, uh, you know, uh-oh. I lost my lost my overhead cam. Went overheated. Are we back? No? Anyways, we don't need it. I'm still rocking the solar. Uh, but... Yeah, uh, the Sapphire is definitely nice to have. <clears throat> uh, Jeet Shah says, do you think Garmin will push the first beat uh, sleep tracking to all the current watches? I hope so. I unfortunately don't think so. I think we're going to see it on probably the more recent stuff. 245, 945, Phoenix, obviously. Um, but I'm, I'm questionable about the rest of rest of the line 
probably everything moving forward. But uh, I think only stuff that was released in the past year or maybe year and a half uh, will get that update, which is unfortunate. But I could be wrong. Hopefully I am. Uh, Mojo says, would you please review Sunto 9 uh, and any initial thoughts on it? Yeah, so that's been a struggle. I get a lot of comments saying, why don't you review any Sunto? And the main reason is because I don't want to buy one. And I'm, I'm not very excited about them because of their limitation in software and in battery life. The Sunto 9 doesn't really uh, compete against the Coro stuff at all and even the Phoenix stuff, but it's in that price point. So I'm just not that excited about it. Uh, I would like to be proven wrong. So I actually did reach out to Sunto and I asked for a loaner of the seven and the nine, but Cricket's back. So, <laughs> I mean, if you, if you've got one, I'd be happy to borrow it, check it out. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to, I don't really want to buy one. Uh, I don't, especially now where the nine's been out for a while. I think they're going to end up refreshing that soon. And if they do, I may potentially buy one for the channel, uh, depending on how much it costs just for review purposes only. Um, that's my take on soon too. I don't, you know, I'm not trying to trash their company at all, but I, I need something compelling and exciting and I just don't get that vibe from the nine. I would say if you like that watch, maybe check out a Coros Apex Pro or Vertex. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, regarding my comment above, uh, it didn't start for me at 10.10, .10, so the distance was off by 0.5 miles on a seven mile run. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I haven't had any issues with my distance. It's been spot on for me. I mean, this is the newer watch, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Have you had different weather cloud cover, um, been in the woods, things like that can affect the, uh, accuracy. Are you a coffee or tea drinker? I am a hardcore coffee drinker, probably like way too many cups a day. Uh, I think at least three in a given day. And I put a little bit of honey in there. That's, that's my jam. A um, couple more questions and we're going to wrap it up. I'm getting uh, a little drowsy from this beer. Hope you guys are drinking with me. Can't be alone in this. Um, do you think the 945 can take a rugged life lifestyle? The plastic worries me a lot. I hate scratches on my ap Apple Watch. And it sucked seeing how bad it got damaged. Yeah, so interestingly, I wore the 945 for a very long time. Uh, I wore it for a 50 mile race. I wore it for a really hardcore um, 43 mile race. And I did scratch the lens on day two. <laughs> uh, it was a pretty bad scratch too. I, I have a picture somewhere that I won't be able to get fast enough to show you. But um, yeah, the lens scratched. But oddly enough, I actually like the plastic case and the bezel because the thing about Phoenix watches is when you scratch the bezel, it it blatantly shows up. Like when you scratch this thing, you're going to see a big dig and you're going to see shiny metal come through. But on the uh, 945, it's plastic and it's black all the way through. So if you scratch black plastic, it's just going to be another black line underneath. If you look closely, you'll see scratches. I did. I had some little dings on there. But realistically, I kind of like the, the plastic build of the 945. Another thing about the 9, 945 I really liked is the weight. Super light. You know, it's almost the same size as the Phoenix, but it felt really super light compared to the, even the titanium model that I have here. Um, I'm a big fan of the 945, and I probably would have continued to use it if uh, they, they rolled the Phoenix 6 uh, features into it quicker. Like, I was too eager to jump on the Phoenix 6 train because of the power modes and all the new things they rolled into the Phoenix 6 and the 945 didn't have it. But today, they actually rolled that stuff all backwards compatible into the 945. Unfortunately, it still doesn't have power modes, but you got like the new widget view and all that stuff that went back. Um, so it's a really compelling option. And I think right now you can get them for like 530 bucks or something like that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, hope that, hope that helps. 
<laughs> Mojo says I can. Mojo says I can lend you mine, dude. I, <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> if you really would consider that, I'd be happy to take very good care of it and mail it back to you. Um, I, I've been I've been dying to to like get a hold of one and use it for like a week, but I, it's been hard to find one. You know, I thought about maybe grabbing a used one or something for the channel, but I've got so many watches here. Um, I know I need to have all the latest and greatest stuff, and I that's why I feel like the nine is just not new enough to to warrant. Like if you want to see a, a Sunto nine review, uh, Desfit, DC Rainmaker, those guys have killer content on that stuff. I like to come at this as like, you know, an everyday guy, ultra runner, um, kind of, you know, outdoorsy kind of guy and not just get too hung up on reading through the spec list. And I think, I hope that's where my channel kind of deviates from, um, you know, like something like DC Rainmakers. Uh, so yeah, that's why I like to, I like to look at like the newer stuff. So Sunto 9, I definitely like to look at it, but I've been having a hard time getting my hands on one. <clears throat> Any updates or issues regarding your headphones of choice? Uh, where are they? Oh, yeah, I put them over here because I want to talk about them. I'm still wearing uh, the Jaybird Vistas. They're still my, my go-tos. Uh, they're definitely not perfect, and you, you learn that from my review. Um, they're awesome headphones though. They're still trucking. They are solidly built. I've, you know, dropped them in puddles and stuff. Uh, I actually dropped one while I was running on a trail and almost lost it, but I ended up finding it. Thankfully, awesome headphones, great fit, sound great. But, uh, like I said, I, I don't know if you're here for it be before these little guys, the, uh, Tribit, uh, Flybuds three, are they almost sound as good as the jaybirds but they're 40 bucks and they've got 100 hour battery life so i thought these were pretty cool i'm probably going to do a short video about these because i'm you know i've got so many headphones but you you have to set yourself apart if you want me to like make a video about it and and these like at a glance they look pretty muted but they're pretty pretty cool i'm pretty pretty stoked on those for the price 40 bucks hope that answers your question Mojo, the Sun 27 is bad. I wouldn't know. Yeah, it looks interesting, but uh, yeah, it looks more like a smartwatch than a, than a fitness tracker to me. Just got to the stream when it's about to end. Just my luck. Sorry, I thought I heard my kids barging in on me, but it wasn't them. Uh, Shani D, uh, you're here. You're here now. That's all that matters. Thanks for joining us. If you've got anything to, to ask, feel free. Okay. I'm probably going to wrap it up. I've been on the air for an hour and a half. Holy smokes. Thanks for hanging with me guys. Appreciate it. Okay. Do I have anything else I want to cover before we leave? Uh, you know what? I'll talk about the giveaway one more time just uh, in case any of you new folks missed it. I'm going to be giving away some of these awesome stickers. The uh, Chase the Summit stickers, they're holographic, so they like turn colors when you uh, when you uh, look at them at different angles. And, you know, my only branding on these really tiny, you can barely see it. I just want to make something cool that you might want to put on the back of your car or on your climbing helmet, something like that. So, uh, yeah, these are available on my website, but you can actually win one of these if you go down into the comments or the description on this video. Um, there's a link that goes to my website. And there's a form there. The subject needs to be swag. And in the message section, you just got to give me your name and address. And I might mail one out to you. Depending how many people sign up, I might mail one to everyone. Uh, who knows? I think so far I've been seeing emails come in on my watch. So some people are definitely signing up. Um, so definitely do that. I'm also going to be giving away one of these puppies. This is the, or a couple of these probably. This is the um, Chase the Summit trucker hat. Um, I've only got like, I think I got like eight of these left in stock, but uh, yeah, I'll send one of these out to you too. I'll probably give away two or three of these as well. So yeah, thanks for joining me guys. Again, I'm so thankful for uh, for everybody watching, subscribing, supporting me. Uh, when I started this journey, I was, <laughs> I didn't even think I'd get to a thousand subscribers, let alone 10. So it's just awesome to see like you guys coming together, like, the, I love reading the comment sections of the videos and seeing people helping people and 
you know, it's just like it kind of became a little forum and, and people are bouncing ideas off people and helping other people with issues. And sometimes I'll go to respond and someone will beat me to it. So I love that. I love uh, that I can help you guys and, and you enjoy watching me because when I started this channel, I was really, I was really embarrassed to be in front of the camera and uh, I'm really still embarrassed to be in front of the camera, but having 10,000 subscribers makes me feel a little bit less like an imposter, like I'm actually validated <laughs> for doing this. So, uh, yeah, anyways, it's been real guys. Uh, thank you for joining me. I'll probably do another one of these, uh, a couple weeks from now. I might, like I said, we're going to work on a, uh, we're going to work on a live show with a guest. We're going to have a guest. We're going to do interviews. We're going to take questions. It's going to be awesome. I just need to do a little bit more typing and, uh, designing the templates and, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Get those numbers up. It helps everybody. Uh, and all the products in this video, I will put down in the description of this video. Uh, there'll be affiliate links.